Welcome back children. So, uh, we start with our second lecture of module 5. In the previous lecture, what we discussed were the galvanic and the electrolytic cells and uh, how you are drawing the circuit diagrams and how you obtain the open circuit voltage. Now, what we will now focus on this particular lecture is the way the ions or the species are transferred from electrode to solution and from solution to electrode. Uh, unlike a normal chemical reaction which you must be well aware in chemical reaction engineering you just have A reacting with B suppose it gives C. So, it is homogeneous in nature. Okay? So, either it is in gas phase or in liquid phase, but in this case you know there are certain things which you have to take care that is the interface between the electrode and the electrolyte. Then there are other effects for example, the bulk diffusion, then surface effects, the desorption, adsorption then the reaction all these things comes into play. So, these are heterogeneous reactions. So, let us see how these reactions and how these uh, different uh, resistances are actually built up when we derive equations for cell potential or electro resistance. So, the current lecture will focus on the, the electrode potential, the kinetics and the mass transfer resistance. So, what we have is the electrode we will focus on electrode and then we will say the cell resistance. Whenever we say the potential difference between two of the half cell, we means the difference between the uh, it is actually the difference we are computing. We are not computing the absolute voltage in a particular cell. So, these are the resistances which are captured in that potential difference. So, the measurement of the electrode potential against a non polarizable reference electrode. So, this non polarizable reference electrode I will again discuss it bit differently. It includes a voltage ohmic drop IRS. This IRS means it is something like a resistance because it is coming either the ions can go from the solution to the electrode or electrode to the solution, it will have some resistance. So, this resistance are primarily within the solution phase. So, that multiplied by the current gives the total resistance IRS in terms of voltage drop. We will consider this in terms of equations. So, it means that the total applied uh, voltage is equal to the voltage uh, which is already uh, total applied voltage or in other words I can say that the applied voltage is used to raise the voltage which is the at a conventional certain uh, concentration plus adding to that the solution resistance will give the total potential or if I want to write down this E, this E is nothing but the equilibrium potential plus the over potential. So, what are these terms? Maybe I will discuss with an example in the next slide, but just keep in mind that this total term is the equilibrium potential which you observe at a standard state plus the over potential. Over potential means a electrode when it is dipped in a solution, how it is polarized, to what extent it is polarized. If it is not at all polarized, we say it is a what we call the non polarizable reference electrode. If it is not at all polarized, it means uh, come what may you increase the current, the voltage remains the, the potential remains the same. But on the other hand, if you pass current, if the voltage changes, even you pass an infinite small current, that is the ideal polarizable electrolyte, electrode, ideal polarizable electrode and non ideal polarizable electrode. And then you add the IRS. So, what are these? I will ask you, I mean I will just discuss these things in the next slide. E applied here is the applied potential. So, when you apply some certain voltage from outside, the E is the electrode potential. So, what is the potential which is measured and equal is the equilibrium electrode potential which is measured by thermodynamics when there is no current passing through the electrode means that open circuit voltage condition and N is the over potential that is the extent to which the electrode is polarized. So, E applied should take into account the ohmic drop needed to propel the ionic current in the electrolyte. The impact of the ohmic potential drop at the measured electrode potential is attenuated by an optimized cell design and proper instrumentation. Now, in the next slide let us derive how we can see visualize these things. So, for example, if suppose I make a power supply, suppose I have a cell, uh, a cell which is mm, the cathode here negative and you have the copper wire 
on top of the cadmium electrode dipped in cadmium nitrate solution let's suppose one molar okay it's one molar so this is the definition of describing a cell and with which it is a such with contact is the cathode anode which is having potassium chloride and uh, which is a salt saturated potassium potassium SAT means saturated and you have Hg2 Cl2 mercury chloride and mercury and chlorine. So, what does it mean that uh, you know this Hg in the elemental form gets oxidized to Hg2 Cl2. So, it is oxidation states goes from 0 to you know plus 2 and the reverse is also possible that is Hg2Cl2 gets broken into Hg and Cl minus. So, it means in that way you have reduction. So, either way it can go. So, this is what you call a reference electrode. So, this I will put it at positive. Now, for example, if this is connected through this is suppose the cell, the entire cell I am drawing it like this this is the entire cell and uh, you can let us suppose you are measuring the current here ok. You are measuring the current here this is positively and uh, mm, uh, you have a power supply somewhere here. This is a power supply. So, this is negatively charged this is positively charged and you connect this close this diagram. And uh, obviously, uh, when you are applying something is this, so it is this entire uh, voltage across this range is the what you call the applied potential. Okay. Now, when there is no load, this total applied potential is the open circuit voltage. So, what is the open circuit voltage? When uh, you measure the uh, potential difference across the two electrodes when there is no load. It means you add a some voltmeter which does not which have so no current passes through it. So, I is equal to 0 it has infinite impedance. The voltage recorded is called open circuit voltage. Now, suppose you have a load here. Now, uh, you know there are two things happening. One is this is the cathode it is a reduction is happening. So, what is the reduction reaction which is happening here? Here what you have is cadmium 2 plus is getting reduced to cadmium ok ok. So, cadmium is getting reduced. So, this particular is uh, this equilibrium voltage is given as minus 0 0.403 with respect to normal hydrogen electrode. So, what is this normal hydrogen electrode? It is the ideal or the reference electrode. I would say it is the reference non ideal reference electrode or non ideal polarized electrode. Oh, so, this is these many volts. Now, for the same case for the other part where the reaction occurring this is a reaction occurring at the cathode and this is a reaction which is occurring at the anode and combining the reactions. Well, I should not write this like this I can also write like this it should be like this both way. So, here the total uh, E 0 is 0 0.242 volts versus NHE. So, both are compared with the normal hydrogen electrode. Okay. So, now uh, what it is if you see from here to here if you go what is the oxidation state in the case of cadmium it is plus 2 it is going to 0. So, plus 2 to 0 reduction is happening while here if you see it is again plus 2 it is going to 0. So, if you go from here to here oxidation occurs. So, uh, this mercury will liberate two electrons along with Hg2 plus Cl2. So, this is the case because you have a positive sign here and a positive power supply here. It means positive means it will try to attract the electrons fine. So, it will try to attract the electrons while negative means will push the electrons towards the cathode. See it is pushing the electrons the cadmium is getting reduced cadmium is getting reduced. So, all these are known. So, and if you want to know the standard potential across these two we just subtract these two it will be close to uh, 0 0.0403 minus 0 0.24 because it is minus it become minus of 0 0.2 volts. So, the total is minus 0 0.64 volts approximately. Okay. So, this is known to.
now it means that if I send applied potential of this value, nothing will flow. So, I will become 0. Okay? So, it means if I send this, type, this much of applied voltage, nothing will flow, I will become 0. Now, what happens if I add up or if I send more than this 0 0.64? Suppose if I send 0 0.80, what will happen? Let us see. So, maybe I will just uh, delete this. So, I hope you have understood this. So, you know that this uh, reactions are occurring now here. So, now what it is, what happens is if I increase it, let us say if I increase it to uh, 0 0.74 volts. So, so, first is 0 0.64. So, this is the 0 0.64, then I is equal to 0. Now, I add up and I go to minus 0 0.74 volt. So, what will happen? So, after the current will flow, I will not be equal to 0. Now, what does this I do? Now, the current will flow from here. You can measure the current. Now, what do you mean by when current is flowing? When the current is flowing means we are not, because what is current? Current is nothing but the passage of charge per unit time, it's coulombs per second, right? Current. Current is coulombs per second. Now, it means how do you relate by this coulombs per second to this reaction? Now, it means that this particular reaction cadmium is reduced to cadmium elemental the rate of the reaction is increased. So, the way it is consuming the electrons when you send minus 0 0.74 is much more faster. So, the rate of this consumption of electrons has increased. So, in that case, if it has increased, so we say number of moles electrolyzed, it means that you will have higher and higher current. Okay? This is very important. So, if you send up a higher value, it means the rate of this reaction is increasing. It is not that you are sending more current from outside, it is the rate of this reaction is increasing. Now, I mean, when I talk about the rate of the reaction, I mean, I am talking about the rate of the forward reaction only, the reduction of cadmium to plus 2 cadmium. Now, what happens if you want to write down in the terms of this uh, equation? So, what you have is right now here, so the rate of the reaction. So, what we saw is the rate of the reaction, rate of the reaction this so cadmium 2 plus is getting reduced to cadmium okay now based on the electrochemistry what we write is the current which is in amperes we write in terms of dq by dt rate of transfer of coulomb per unit time coulomb per unit second okay so current thus is written as coulomb per unit second now this is also true that amount of coulomb passing divided by the stoichiometric ratio. Stoichiometric ratio means how many number of electrons it is used for reducing this metal. So, it is 2. So, n here is 2. In general, I am writing n associated with the Faraday's constant, give the total charge. So, it is coulomb per coulomb mole. So, it is coulomb. See, this is coulomb and this is coulomb per mole because this n is per mole, these are equivalent, two equivalent of electrons are used to per mole and Faraday is column, column per mole, the units and if you just uh, simplify this expression, so column, column get cancelled, you have moles. So, what is that moles? Moles is nothing but n's, it is the moles electrolyzed. So, it means it is the number of moles which are electrolyzed of cadmium. Okay. So, if this is true, if this is the moles, I will just rub out this cadmium, this expression. So, it means how much of the moles is electrolyzed per unit time. If I want to write it down, it will be rate. I can now express something like this rate. I can write down as dn by dt. I can write moles per second. So, n is moles per unit time, it is seconds. This is I can write down I upon n f. I am rewriting it again. This is small n, this is capital F. Okay. So, current flown per unit equivalence or I can another way of writing it because the electrode, uh, electrolyte uh, interface depends upon the flow per unit area which is perpendicular per unit area. Current if it is written per unit area, it becomes current density. So, if I divide this by area. So, if I write like this, n f a 
this can also be written as J upon NF. So, current density by amount of, so this particular expression you should be very familiar, okay, how the rate actually varies with the current and how it varies still with the number of moles electrolyzed. So, this is what is happening when you have current flowing, this reaction is happening at a high higher rate. Okay, so, this is about the current density. Now, my question is, okay, fine, you can uh, keep on increasing this voltage, go on and on and on. So, when you keep increasing it on, a higher and higher values, what happens? See, your reference electrode is built to withstand a certain amount, right? But um, not most of the reference electrodes can withstand that amount of current, okay? So, suppose it is not able to withstand, what will happen? So, it won't be stable across this potential range 0.64 volts so it will vary so that's what we define the two different uh, the regimes one is the ideal polarized electrode this will look something like this so this is your applied and this is the current so even if you send a small infinite small value of current each applied changes and even if you send a, but so this is called ideal polarized electrode. So entire thing is polarized. So whatever you are sending, even if it is small current, it will change the potential. Well, in this case, if this is the shape, so this is actually vertical. So this is the shape. So this is E again, and this is I again. So, this to this region is vertical. So, it means no matter how much current you pass through the reference electrode, in this case our reference electrode is called standard calomel electrode. Standard calomel electrode, if this is the case, so it means see its, its potential is not changing even if you change current. So, it means when I am measuring the applied difference, so this particular part on the right hand side remains constant. So, it does not matter how much current I pass, the E remains constant. So, I can uh, easily measure between this range to this range different currents what will be the applied potential. Okay. So, this is called non-ideal polarized electrode. Okay. We want this, we want actually this because we want to compare our electrode with a standard electrode this is we want actually. So, this is now that is why we compare ourselves with the one which is available or which is actually in the domain of our interest. Okay? So, I hope this is actually clears up many of your doubts like uh, current and voltage, how are they related to each other. We will now slowly try to derive you know a uh, expression how the current varies with the potential or maybe I will discuss a new term for us over potential. What is over potential? Let us see in the next slide. Now, uh, this is what just now we discussed, just I am recording. So, this is all the ferretic current, fine. This is the ferretic current Q upon NF. I just now discussed rate is the total current, ferretic current by NFA. So, N you know, N is the number of equivalents, ferretic constant, A is the area. So, in double layer charging current, we have the classical physics given the capacitance as Q up by E and for the double layer charging current is nothing but C into A, capacitance of double layer into area. So, the total current of any electrochemical cell is the sum of the Faradic current and the sum of the double layer current. Now, what we are to do is that now let us see uh, when we write a standard e equation, how it looks like. So, suppose what is the over potential? We want to look that. So, we revisit that particular electrochemical cell and uh, we saw that in this case, we are revisiting that particular cell, uh, we saw its equilibrium value is given as uh, minus 0 0.64, something like that 0 0.64 volt. So, this is with of the cadmium with respect to the standard calomel electrode which is the mercury electrode which we just saw. Okay. This is known. So, if you send this much, there will be no current. Now, if you send no current will flow through the ammeter. Now, if there is increased in magnitude, let us suppose now it is increased to 0 0.8 volts, 0 0.80 volts. So, what will happen here? So, the extra applied voltage is actually distributed in two parts. What it is? One part of the voltage goes to the electrode and the other part of the voltage goes through the electrolyte in the bulk. 
So it means you have a particular electrode getting polarized for that some current is getting consumed and the other current is allowing the species to pass to the solution. It is pushing the ions or pushing the species to pass through into the bulk. Okay? So that is where you get the total current is used for the extra current. I will say extra current because amount of current initially will try to negate this standard. Then the immediately the two parts, extra part, two part deliver the current. So what is the extra it is going to? It is going to first it shifts to a new value, shifts to a new value. The remainder, let us say the remainder is amount, uh, let us say it shifts to a new value means 0 0.70 volt. Now this is the, I mean uh, based on the existing electrolytic cell, ele electronic cell, your new value is this much instead of 0 0.64 and the remaining let us say 0 0.1 volt, 0 0.1 volt goes to the ohmic drop. What is this ohmic drop? It is the current flow in the solution. Now I am not writing whether the current flow in the solution is from electrode current flow in the solution. So I am not writing whether it is from the electrode to electrolyte or electrolyte to electrode. Both actually constitutes of ohmic drop and this ohmic drop may be positive or negative depending upon whether it is cathode or anode. Catholic will be negative and this will be positive like that. So, this is the ohmic drop. So, now this ohmic drop is that is why it is written as current into Rs, the resistance in the solution multiplied by the current. So, now still we want to write out the fresh applied value. If I write down this expression for this particular 0 0.80 as the applied potential E applied. as compared to standard calomel electrode is equal to E of cadmium applied cadmium versus st same standard calomel electrode SCE minus I of RS. So, whatever you are sending this will be the new value, new value minus the bulk resistance which can be further decomposed, this particular part can be decomposed to its equilibrium value which is given by thermodynamics CD versus SCE plus the over potential minus IRS. Okay. So, it means this entire uh, this part, the new reference standard value is equal to nothing but the equilibrium voltage which is used to negate this 0 0.64 and the over potential that is the extent to which the reference electrode gets polarized. Okay? So, that is called the uh, your total the new value of the potential and then you subtract IRS that is the bulk resistance you get the overall expression of the applied potential. So, when there is a cathodic current both are negative, when there is a cathodic current both are negative when anodic current with both are positive. Okay. So, this you should understand the over potential, okay, the over potential is very important. So, it is uh, the over potential I just now explained. So, how till what extent the reference electrode is polarized the over potential. Okay. So, that is the expression. So, we now go ahead. Now, we have seen the cases, you know, initially we saw the cases where you have certain mass transfer limitations. So, if you assume that the chemical reactions are one of the cases. So, uh, you know this you must have remember if this is the metal surface you have the electrons coming here or is going there. So, you have oxygen adsorbed AD then you have the reducted adsorbed then you may have several, this is the metal surface, the electrode surface or the metal surface. Then you will have either absorption to this end, absorption or desorption. Then you can have the adsorption to this end and again desorption to this part. 
uh, then uh, you have some species R, R dash, okay, these are in equilibrium with each other, then you have the reaction happening, then again reaction, intermediate, then reaction happening, these are all happening in the bulk. Outside you have bulk, inside you have the electrode surface region, the electrode surface region, ESR is electrode surface region, this is the metal surface and this is the bulk. So, you have several sorts of mass transfer resistances and reactions. So, what are the different uh, reactions happening? See you have the reactions happening on the electrode surface. So, uh, either electrons are exchanged to across the electrode or it is given out in the electrode. Then uh, this is the reductant form, this is the oxidant form. Like that it get again adsorbed or dissolved goes to this intermediate and then finally it becomes equilibrium with the bulk. Then it has to go into the bulk also, O of bulk and then this is sorry this will be R, R of bulk. So, all these are resistances, okay. these are different resistances occurring together. So, we need to quantify actually. So, what are the different resistances we can classify? One is the resistance to charge transfer, one is the re resistance due to the you know the reactions and another is the resistance due to the solution okay, within the bulk solution. So, three different resistance occurs. So, if we assume that the reactions are fast, not the rate controlling, the mass transfer is the rate controlling, then we will have to have an expression which actually relates the transfer of the species across the solution that is from electrode to the bulk solution in terms of uh, electric field. So, what are the different uh, movement possible? If you only consider mass transfer, here I am only considering mass transfer, I am considering reactions to be uh, fast. So, rate determining is the mass transfer steps. So, there can be migration, movement of a charged species due to an electric field, see this is the migration, it is happening here, gradient due to the gradient of electric potential or there may be movement of species owing to a gradient of chemical potential, gradient of concentration or it may be convection. So, it may be a steering or hydrodynamic transport, fluids flow due to natural convection, due to density gradient or forced convection typified by laminar or turbulent flow and stagnant regions. So, this we come across to the nurse Planck equation which governs mass transfer to an electrode. So, this is the flux of the IH species. So, what you have is this one is the diffusion term that is the concentration gradient of the charged species and this is the electric term that is due to the transfer of the electrons due to the electric field. What is the effect of the transport of the electrons? due to the electric field that term and this is your what you call the convection term. Okay. So, together all these three will give us the flux of the I species. So, this is how we represent mass transfer in a electrochemical process. Now, uh, same thing can be analyzed here. If you see this is a mercury for example, if this is a mercury, huh, mercury amalgam with positive charges around it and then you are surrounded with a uh, electrolyte with no net charge because some of the positive charges are around this amalgam while negative charge are around the electrolyte. So, what happens if you want to bring a positive charge from an infinite direction towards the center? So, this is what the potential looks like. See, initially when you try to bring this because uh, not much because this positive charge will be attracted. So, you need lower and lower negative energies, lower negative energies. Lower means you will be easily be going from vacuum to the electrode while when you come in the electrolyte, this is this region, the electrolyte region, it will have fairly a constant potential, you can ask phi s. Now, you want to go inside this, you need a further higher negative potential. So, this is the drop, this is called the interfacial potential. So, you need to drop down to psi m in order to get accumulated here. So, as more and more positive charges you supply from outside, so obviously your uh, you know the, if it goes inside the, um, the negative charge will build up outside the um, potential, but uh, so, so will be your uh, this curve, the curve trend will remain the same, the absolute values will be 
differing. So, this potential difference is what is psi m minus psi m which is called the interficial potential difference. So, it is dependent on the charge imbalance and the physical size of the interface. Okay. So, we go ahead. Now, we uh, saw this, we saw that there are two ways you can measure the current. See, if there is a small IRS value means when there is small ohmic drop, then a true electrode configuration is preferred. The solution resistance is not much, then you use a two electrode assembly. This is a two electrode assembly, this is a assembly which is actually built in our lab. So, you have the two electrodes, one, two, then you have the electrolyte within it and uh, this is the one where you measure the current. From here you measure current. Okay. So, this is your you, call, you can say there is a reference electrode, this is the working electrode, the electrode where we are concerned with and we apply a voltage across these two electrodes. This is the power supply which is outside somewhere. So, now this is two electrode assembly. This works well when this is low, but the issue is this is called device level. We also call this as a device level, but the issue is for a highly when the resistance is more, for example, in aqueous solutions, non aqueous solutions. Uh, Sorry, this is for, I mean, when I talk about resistive means there will be some resistive. It is, I mean, there will not be any condition where there is no resistance at all. So, then two electrode assembly is employed, but if it is very high, this IRS value is pretty high, this IRS very high, then this is not of much use because problem is this reference electrode will lose its, so this reference electrode needs to be like this with respect to current and voltage. So, if the current is more, this will get polarized, it will not be non ideal, uh, non polarized, it will something like, it will show like this. So, if it is like this, it is not at all vertical, then uh, you cannot measure with respect to what will you measure? You cannot measure with respect to something which is itself is not sure what is potential or is. So, this potential will actually change because you are sending more and more current. To avoid that, what you do? You use a counter electrode here. So, what the counter electrode does is, it will just take the current which is supplied here and uh, it will pass it through, suppose it is working electrode, instead of passing it to reference electrode, it will just pass it to the back to the power supply. So, it gives a path of the current, so that the reference electrode is not, you know, it is kept as non-polarized, ideal non-polarized electrode. So, we need this, we do not need this, so as to compare our applied voltage. So, working electrode, this is called a three electrode assembly. See, in our lab, what we did, we have the counter electrode is the gold, in the gold and the reference is of silver, silver chloride solution and the working is again of gold, for example, but you can use anything else. So, counter electrode what it will do when there are large amount of current passing, it will just give a path of flowing this current instead of going through reference, it will pass through counter. So, the current is made to pass between the working and the counter electrode and the potential of the working is evaluated against the reference, which actually then uh, remains as idealized non-polarized electrode. Okay. This is the way you do the different measurements of current and voltage. So, now some mathematical definition, what is the electrochemical potential? The electrochemical potential is similar to like chemical potential, but with the effect of electric field in it. So, likewise same way which is the chemical potential of a compound in a mixture is the chemical potential of compound in that particular phase alpha plus this is due to the electric field. The so, phi alpha is the potential and this potential can be written as in terms of the entire uh, term, it can be written as amount of partial derivative of Gibbs free energy with respect to number of moles at constant temperature pressure and moles of other components kept constant. So, this G prime is similar to the G prime which we use in chemical thermodynamics except that it includes the electric field effects. Now, Fermi level, you must be aware of this. What is this? The electronic chemical potential in a phase alpha corresponds to a electron energy alpha. So, it means that E f alpha is the average energy value of the surrounding electrons, okay, of the electrons available in the solution that is called Fermi level in the case of electrochemical potential. Fermi level depicts the mean energy of available electrons in phase alpha and is related to the inner potential of alpha and the electron chemical in that phase. For a metal or semiconductor, 
Fermi level depends on the work function of the material. Now, what is the work function? Now, what is the work function here? The work function here is how much amount of energy I require to extract a electron from the solid lattice. So, here in this case it is called the work function that is the Fermi level in the case of metal or semiconductor. But in a solution phase it depends on the electrochemical potential of the dissolved, reduced and oxidized species. Okay. So, are the properties of electrochemical potential is obviously in case of uncharted species the chemical potential of the component in the phase is equal to chemical potential component in the alpha phase. For any substance mu i alpha is equal to mu i in the standard state in the RT ln alpha when mu i alpha is the standard potential and alpha i is the activity of the ith species in phase alpha. For pure phase at unit activity this becomes equal to with though the subscript goes away and for electrons in a metal because then this additional term due to the electric field comes here added to the pure chemical potential of the electron. For equilibrium of the IS species, if the two phases alpha and beta and equilibrium, this equation holds true. Now, there is a term called as liquid junction potential. It means you have two electrolytes connected, as two solutions are connected, then the solutions electrolyte also plays a major role. Like uh, if there is a change in the current or the change in the potential. So, this potential are defined in various uh, manner. That is, first is uh, when there is two solutions with the same electrolyte but at different concentration. So, this is one part half cell, this is the other half cell. So, you have a higher concentration here, lower concentration here. So, in that case what will happen? H plus ions will move from here to here from negative to positive direction. So, the rate, the line length in signifies that the rate of transfer of H plus ions will be more than C L minus ions. Okay. So, but this is not uh, true because after a certain instant of time when more and more of H plus will go here, here chlorine atom will be developing. So, because of this chlorine atoms there will be negative charge, it will not allow the H plus to pass to the other side. Then what happens? The chlorine atoms will start transferring until it reaches to the rate of transfer of H plus. Then type 2 is the two solution with different electrolytes, same concentration having a common ion. What is the common ion here? Common ion is Cl, here is Cl, this, but here it is potassium, it is hydrogen. So, obviously, this is a hydrogen lighter, it will go from uh, this part negative to positive part and K, K plus will go from positive to negative. Okay. So, there will be interchange of the cations. Well, in this case when there is not satisfying either A or B, either this or this condition, this may occur. Let us say you have two different electrolyte, two different concentration, then it will depend the diffusion, the transfer of the ions will depend upon the various other factors. So, suppose potassium plus nitrate ion is going from positive to the negative side, chlorine goes from negative to positive like that. So, these lines depict different rates, order, the order of the rates. So, just now I explained arises when the two solutions with different concentration are in contact with each other. The solution with more concentration is prone to diffuse into one with lesser concentration. The diffusion rate of an ion is approximately proportional to its speed due to an electric field. If anions diffuse faster than cations, they are diffused ahead into the solution rendering a negative charge and a positive charge in the concentrated solution. This leads to a formation of electrical double layer of opposite charges at the solution junction. So, this is called the liquid junction potential, the potential difference that arises at the point of junction on account of the transfer of ions. The magnitude of this potential is a function of the relative speed of the ionic movement. It can be minimized by substituting the junction with a concentrated solution in an intermediate salt bridge where the solution in the bridge possesses ions of approximately equal mobility. This is similar to like in a galvanic cell, okay, you put a salt bridge sodium chloride so that uh, you know you do not have a huge negative charge in one end and the other positive charge in the other end. So, salt bridge similar way you can also control the liquid junction potential. So, while you do this you also measure that what is the amount of current transferred by the hydrogen and transferred by the chlorine. So, if you add these two up these can be expressed in terms of transference number and the summation of transference number of all the species is equal to 1. So, how is this transference number determined? It is determined from the ionic conduction through the either through the measurement of the resistance to current flow in electrolyte or the conductance. Now, we define a new term called conductance. 
So, this conductance is given as L kappa A by L. So, the conductance is directly proportional to the cross sectional, the perpendicular area through which the species are passing and inversely proportional to the length of that segment. So, this is the conductivity. What is the conductivity? This is conduct, not conductivity, kappa is conductivity. It is a function of the mobility. What is mobility? The mobility is the restricting velocity of an ion in electric field of unit strength. So, it means that uh, something is going in this direction. Suppose some ion is going in this direction uh, due to the electric field E. If it is not restricted by anything, it will go very smoothly. But the issue is then uh, you have a, a drag force which will be applying on the ion within the solution drag force while the electric force will propel it ahead drag force will propel it backwards. So, this is called mobility which is a restricting velocity of an ion in electric field of unit strength. Here F is the Faraday constant Z i is the magnitude of the charge of the ih species C i is the concentration of ih species. Okay. This is the way you conduct the or calculate the mobility. Now, we common way of expressing this reaction across the electrode electrolyte assembly is through the Arrhenius equation. This you must be familiar all the chemical engineering students, this you are the common expression where you study in the first chapter of chemical reaction engineering. So, what you have is you have this two valley here reactants and products. Okay. So, it means this is the Gibbs free energy of the reactants and this is the Gibbs free energy of the products. And uh, you need to follow up this barrier so that reactants get converted to products or reversibly products get converted to reactants. Either way you have to follow this behavior. So, if you look up this expression, what is this? This is some sort of barrier activation energy and this is the A is the frequency. Frequency factor means how much time, how many times you need to go, how frequent you can you know you can calculate or you can overcome this barrier. Okay. So, the x axis we call as reaction coordinate and y axis is the potential energy. So, height of the maximum over a value is determined by E A F. So, this is if you want you can write this is as E A F and uh, you know this one uh, for a forward reaction and for the backward reaction. So, E of E A B this is E A B. Okay. So, forward reaction this is backward reaction. So, at the time when the reaction is completed, when both the rates are equal, we say equilibrium is achieved. That is the forward reaction is equal to the backward reaction. Okay. So, E A can also be interpreted as the alteration in standard internal energy in traversing from a minima to the maxima that is transition state or activated complex. So, uh, same thing this particular position here at the top it is either called transition state or a activated complex. Now, the transition state theory states that uh, you have the reactants here. So, this is the difference in the reactants how much you have to cross that is the Gibbs free energy of the reactants with respect to the transition state. So, the following the state of chemicals existing as reactants and prior to the state of the existence as product a hypothetical transition state takes place. The activated complex is a higher energy species that is conceived at the time of transition of a chemical reaction. The theory describes how a chemical reaction happened and is founded on the collision theory. The theory puts forward three major factors that tell the feasibility of a reaction. The activity complex concentration, the rate of breaking apart of the activated complex, the mechanism of breaking apart whether it can transform into products or it can change back into reactant, whether it goes in this direction in product or it goes in this direction. So, if it goes in the forward direction you have products for example, in this case you have either products. So, this hydroxyl ion reacts with methyl bromide this is the activated complex, the activated complex is the one here this product and whether it will go to this methyl bromide and bromine atoms or it will go to this direction. Okay. So, this is your product this is your reactant will depend upon this delta G and the reaction conditions. Now, to express this uh, expression which we called as the model, the butler volmer model is derived. So, what it says is it varies the potential difference across the electrode electrolyte interface. Electrode potential only changes with the electron energy. Now, what happens? I will draw two of the axis here. This is one axis 
and this is the other axis. This I am putting out a reaction here in a plus So it means this reaction is happening. So if this is a reaction coordinate, so to this end you will be having sodium amalgam and to this end you will have a concentration of sodium ion plus electron and this is the applied potential. Now we have three cases, first is the equilibrium cases when both the oxidation and reaction takes place equally. So if I plot the Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy, the free energy, this is E is not potential, is the free energy. So the free energy means uh, this is the free energy where uh, NaG is getting formed, that is reduction is getting in this part, the left hand side is the reduction and the right hand side it is oxidation. So reduction taking place, taking place, taking place, but and then there is the oxidation free energy profile taking place, that is the sodium is getting uh, oxidized to Na plus and electron. So this is same, so if you see this and this plateau, this represent the same value this much. But now if I apply a more po positive potential, more positive potential, the positive potential will, what it will do? It will be supplying more electrons pot potential, so it means this particular uh, reaction will be favored. So they will be trying to, ox the oxidation will be more in this case, so it will be pushing in more electrons, so, so it means more potential means more oxidation. So that is why you see the rate of oxidation I am making it longer as compared to reduction and this particular plateau here and this plateau it is lowered, so this is lowered by this distance. So we say that the oxidation is preferred in this case when we apply a positive potential. Now when you apply a negative potential, the reverse happens. So what happens? The reduction is favored. This reaction will occur and Na plus will convert to Na in the amalgam. So you go to this amalgam side when you have a negative potential, you go to the solution side when you have a positive potential. Okay. So now you see the re reduction arrows are more as compared to the oxidation. So this he proposed, can we then quantify these things, can we quantify in the form of expressions? He, he did that through this expression. Now what is this expression all about? I will just let you know. Now what you have is, you have two peaks, now uh, consider this is the same thing in earlier also, you have the two axis, this is your potential, the free energy. E is potential and this is the reaction coordinate RC I am writing, okay, RC. Now the, this is you call it the cathodic, you know the cathodic part here, huh? so it means that, uh, so a reaction is happening where O plus E is given to be R, this reaction consider the case, O plus E is R. So at this end you have O plus E, the oxidation part happening and at this region you have the reductant, that is the, the particular species is reduced. So if that is the case, so this is this line actually shows the free energy change at equilibrium condition, that is when there is E0 at equilibrium condition. Now when you apply a positive potential, you po apply E, where E minus E0 is the extra positive potential you apply, it will lower the oxidation reaction free energy profile, see it is lowering this profile it is lowers by this amount, okay. Then the delta G in case of ideal case delta G C0 becomes delta G C, okay, it is lowering and uh, in the case of the reduction it is increasing, see delta G A0 it is also, this is sorry, this is also lowering with respect to the activated, so the, we should see where the point of intersection is, from there we should compute what is the change in the so we should focus only on this region, this region, okay. So this region means what you have is the total delta G0, we give a term called as alpha which is a transfer coefficient. So uh, it means that uh, delta G0, delta GA double star means standard condition, delta double star A 
एट स्टैंडर्ड कंडीशन वाई माइनस अल्फा एफ ई माइनस ई नॉट एंड डेल्टा जी कैथोड इज सेम एक्सप्रेशन वेन यू हैव एडेड सर्टन अल्फा एफ ई माइनस ई जीरो ओके सो नाउ इफ आई वॉन्ट टू राइट द फॉरवर्ड एंड द बैकवर्ड रिएक्शन दिस के एफ इक्वल्स टू ए एफ द अरिनस फैक्टर इन टू एक्सपोनशियल माइनस डेल्टा जी सी वाई आर टी ओके एंड के बी इज द बैकवर्ड रिएक्शन ए बी एक्सपोनशियल माइनस डेल्टा जी ए बाई आर टी ओके सो नाओ इफ यू पुट दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड दिस एक्सप्रेशन इन टू दिस एंड दिस रेस्पेक्टिवली एंड इफ यू सिंप्लीफाई एंड देन से दैट दिस के एफ इक्वल टू के बी एट इक्लूब्रियम वॉट यू ऑप्टेन इज सी दिस एल्फा आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू वॉट इज दिस This alpha is what is the potential change on the standard free energies of activation for oxidation reduction when you apply a extra potential from outside. Okay, so uh, you just write this. If you solve that expression, you get this: the Butler-Volmer equation. I'm not going to derivation. This the current is equal to stoichiometric coefficient to Faraday a area k naught is a rate constant. Then you have the concentration. at uh, initial concentration and function of time alpha is a transfer coefficient okay e minus e not the change in the potential like that one for oxidant one for reduction so this is a butler volmer equation applicable to any electrochemical reaction under any condition so the electrode reaction kinetics just now i have shown so if you have the rate of equation like this kb the backward rate kf the forward rate in terms of transfer coefficients at equilibrium when there is no charge the nernst equation then takes over the nernst equation can be written in this manner that co cr is the concentration at the initial part and co star cr star is in the equilibrium concentration the bulk concentration okay the exchange current even there is no charge there is a exchange current you can uh, write down in this manner i not is equal to nf ak so this expression gives the exchange current ha huh? what is the exchange current due to the both cathode and anode this is our exchange current even though the total charge may be net charge may be zero and the uh, current versus upper potential equation then then be expressed in this form so i equal to i not the exchange current into the concentration in initial case to the um, the bulk concentration into e to the power of minus alpha transfer coefficient like that so you get from one expression at the oxidation Uh, part one reaction from the reduction part so this is the current over potential expression so when there is no mass transfer the solution are under rubber steering so there is minimal current so c0 becomes c0 at the interface and all bulk cr also becomes bulk then the butler volmer equation takes this form so if i draw out this plot i versus over potential so you will get the over potential at different alpha values as plotted here okay so this is expresses how the expression how a reference electrode will vary with respect to current okay so one end is this and one end is this so whether from here to here whatever uh, you have the variation this is expressed by the butler volmer equation when there is no mass transfer effect so the tafel equation is the connects the rate of electrochemical reaction with the over potential when you have small over potential current is equal to minus i not fn rt and the charge transfer due to the resistance of the charge transfer is rt ni phi so you have the if you plot this expression so you have for a large value of potential for negative potential you have this expression for a positive potential you have this expression now what they do is that they plot this on a log i versus e okay log i versus e so you will give a cathodic slope and you have a anodic slope so during charging and this is during discharge you extend this together the point where they meet is nothing but i not okay from the plot i not and alpha can be determined because the intercept here is i not and the slope is alpha so you can estimate the transfer coefficient and the i not which is the initial current okay so this is for a tafel plot for a copper electrode okay so same expression i have just written in terms of over potential log of current versus over potential 
then you also express everything in the fixed laws of diffusion the molar flux owing to diffusion this is the now we are considering mass transfer effect the molar flux owing to diffusion is proportional to the concentration gradient this is the concentration gradient the first law governs the movement of electrolyte from a region of higher concentration to that of lower concentration across the concentration gradient this is must be familiar with the fixed law who have read mass transfer J0 xt is the number of moles of O that pass a specific location per unit time per unit area normal to the area axis of diffusion and D0 is the diffusivity. Second law governs the prediction of concentration change along with the term, time or into the diffusion. This delta square is the Laplacian operator. Then just for your uh, reference I am giving this expression we will not be solving these uh, laws of diffusion. Then we come to the electrochemical characterization. The electrochemical characterization is crucial in understanding the reactivity in electrochemical processes and assessing the properties and performance of electrochemical technologies. The primary electrol electrochemical characterization techniques include linear sweep voltammetry, it determines the electrochemical stability of analyte, then cyclic voltammetry, it evaluates the reactivity and mass transfer of an analyte. Then you have the galvanostatic charge discharge we test the cycle life of the electrochemical device then the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy we measure the impedance or the resistance over a range of frequency. So to do all this operation you require an instrument known as potentiostat. The potentiostat is interface to a PC compatible software which is in use for experiments. The fundamental components of an electronanalytical system comprises of a potentiostat, a computer and the electrochemical cell. These are typically assembled from discrete integrated circuit operation amplifier and other digital modules. In standalone potential state and externally adjustable waveform generator is typically used for providing the excitation signal to modulate the applied potential. In the computer control instruments, the characteristics of the modulation and the waveform are software control and may be customized accordingly. Micro and nano size electrode demand potential stats with capabilities of very low current. Specific demands have given rise to broad range of potential stat for application. So this is what you have the reference counter and the working cell. This is called the electrochemical cell in this part. This is the potential stat, the instruments. Then it can have the module for converting the current volt voltage, and this is recorded or inserted into a microcontroller, and you acquire acquisition, do the acquisition, data acquisition or you want to send the impedance, you send a AC signal with various waveforms, then you see what is the resistance of the bulk within the bulk and within the electrode, that also you can do in the form of waveform generation. So this is the electrical circuit diagram, OA1, OA2, these are all, uh, you know, these are the one which you actually have in a standard commercial instrument. Uh, so concluding here, we show the actual potential stat which is in our laboratory. So this is that uh, entire uh, this potential stat uh, which we have. Now this is the carbon electrode what we do experiments. This is a working electrode you see this is a back, this, this is the reference electrode is written RE. This is the counter electrode, reference electrode. Counter electrode is uh, you know the, we have made here counter electrode as AU. I just now put this example earlier also. So this is all kept inside a Faraday cage and uh, you put all the electrodes, you get connected interface to this Parstat 3000A and there you can uh, measure several properties such as capacitance versus voltage. So uh, you can measure the current, you can apply voltage or uh, you know these different things you can do based on the software it has and this is how actually I will like to conclude here in the case of instrument. We will see uh, what we will do in the next class. We will see uh, what uh, what form of wave if I give, how will the particular electrochemical cell respond, and from that particular data, what is the useful information we can have, whether it how stable it is, how electrochemically it is stable, till what voltage we can apply, what is the scan rate. All these properties I will discuss in the next class. Thank you.